damn it! Why me? I can't get caught! Not like this! Uh, I've got to find someone to pin this on! Someone like... him! I'll make it look like... he did it! Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hi, hiya, Chief. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everybody takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons why I became an attorney. Wow, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Hmm. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Despair! <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Ugh. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh! It's all over! I... I'm finished! I'm finished! I can't live in a world without her! I can't! Who... who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Ah, oh, Nick! You gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? Hmm... <clears throat> the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. And my name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do! The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank... thank you, Your Honor. Hmm... Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Gulp, hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Um, the defendant is me, right? Right! Have you completely lost your mind? Focus! The defendant is the person on trial! You're his lawyer! Um, er, uh, oh yeah, right. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. You did pass a bar, didn't you? Sorry, I couldn't hear your answer. I'll ask once more. 
Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Hmm, correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Woo! I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No. No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim? Of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Um, Mia Fey? What? How can I be the victim? Oh, right. Sorry. I, uh, it was the first name that popped in my head, and... Let me ask that one again. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Oh, um, wasn't it Miss Block? And Miss Cinderblock? Mm-mm. The person in question was a victim of murder, not ill-conceived naming, Mr. Wright. Right? A mistake in court could cost you the case. I'll ask you again. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Hmm, correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? Right. She was strangled, wasn't she? Please tell me that was you talking to yourself. Mm -mm. If you wish to hang yourself, Mr. Wright, you're welcome to, but not inside my courtroom. I suppose there's nothing to do but give you another try. She died because she was... She was struck once by a blunt object. Mm, correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then... First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor? As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the Thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help you in your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls, or seeing me, ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you, and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. 
Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof! Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die! I just gotta drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this! Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question! You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh. Well, did you, or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. I'll send him a signal. I like a dog. Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime! Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Solid to the stand. Mr. Solid, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes! Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright, and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that! Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout, uh, for your perusal. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes? Er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Um... What exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? 
Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Uh, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Um, okay. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Hold it! Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Uh, huh. I don't know. He just seems strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad, and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So, what happened next? I thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Hold it! Half open, you say? Yes, yes. The door was open halfway. Yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd. In a big city like this, I thought. I see. And what happened next? Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Hold it! What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to... peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. True words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm, why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. Hold it! Are you sure she was dead? Well, no. I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all. And there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well. What happened next? I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Hold it! So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no. Nothing. Okay. What happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. However... The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Hold it! The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes. I mean, no. No, it wasn't. Right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment. Or did you? Oh, oh, that! I can explain that! There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working. Incorrect. What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Hold it! Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And, being the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Ah, right. What time did you call again? I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m., for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that! Oh, uh... Objection! This is 
trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! Mm -mm. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, Wright. Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait! I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Wright, you know what to do. I've got this one. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. OBJECTION! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <clears throat> you couldn't have heard a television, or a video. I... well... uh... The defense has a point! Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Uh... Ah! W wait! I remember now! Mr. Sawit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather... distraught. Uh, my apologies, Your Honor. It... Uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. Hmm, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence! Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Solid. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The mech is a switch. You just tilted and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly, a contradiction. 
Hmm, indeed! You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that. I can prove you're the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Solid, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable. Since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim, that voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection! What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I that, that day! I, I never! Look, I... the clock! I heard... no, I mean I saw... saw... Uh, ah! Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It, it was him, I tell you! I saw him! And he killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor! A moment, please! There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims! Mr. Wright! Your Honor? You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Solid heard was definitely this clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time! Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Solid heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Solid, you try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing! Uh oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! Yeah. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yeah. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Ah, I almost had him. <laughs> Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sot! Mia? I mean, Chief? Listen up, Right. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time downing the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it! Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof! Right, right? 
Can you think of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh... Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it! Well, Mr. Wright? You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off! Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day of the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong? Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> oh, order! Order, I say! Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He... Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time! Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts... NOT GUILTY! And with that, the court is adjourned! It turns out that Frank Sollett was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Salt let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Salt grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Whew! I still can't believe we won! Right. Good job in there. Congratulations! Uh, thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I saw a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Oh, Nick! Don't worry about me! I'll be dead gone soon! Good. Wait, no! I mean, bad! Bad, bad, bad! Larry, you're innocent! This case is closed! What? But my Cindy Windy's gone, man! Gone forever! Larry, she was a. Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever! Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat! Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey! Here! And take this! It's a present! A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. 
I made one for her and one for me. Uh, really? You you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, right. Take that! Check this out, Larry. Prove positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. <laughs> she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. I hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying a part of why you became a lawyer was because of him? Er, uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me, unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep.